absolutely beautiful Libra friends and welcome to your horoscope for June of 2021 where Libra this month we've got both Jupiter and Neptune heading into retrograde giving us an immediate indicator that things are starting to slow down just a little bit we can give ourselves some permission to review which is I definitely think what is on the agenda for you this month Mercury is still in retrograde so even the mind is still in review mode we're also going to welcome in the uh, summer solstice this month we will also have another eclipse this month but this one is a solar eclipse so asking us to begin some fresh things off of what we learned in May and carry these out and let them come to bloom over this next six months as well we will have the second of three Saturn Uranus squares this month happening really trying to wiggle us out of this comfort zone it's quite a feat and it can be quite frustrating so we'll talk about that all here in the forecast okay all right, right in the beginning of the month on the second, we're going to see Venus move into the energy of Cancer. Venus is our planet bringing a harmony, bringing a magnetism to any area that she goes in. In the energy of Cancer, they're quite comfortable with one another. Venus and Cancer actually really enjoy being with one another. And here in your 10th house, which is the tip top of your chart, the midheaven area, they're bringing a nurturing, a magnetism maybe even this sense of family or connection with women in your workplace or in your career or whatever your reputation is or whatever it is that you're doing out in public that we know you for you may see have this sense or this feeling that venus is literally magnetizing this area for you definitely because it's career could we think of things like oh could i be getting that promotion right now or if you're looking for work could I be finding a job at this particular time? Absolutely you can, but really Venus is coming here to magnetize this area a little bit more, bring a nurturing, bring some support in, in what you're doing in this career area. So definitely enjoy that because Venus will be here the entire month, okay? On the 10th, we've got this new moon solar eclipse happening at 19 degrees of Gemini. This is going to light up your ninth house space, publishing, marketing, broadcasting, faith, philosophies, um, ideologies all live up here in the ninth house. Now, because this is a solar eclipse, we're going to see the energies play out for about six months, but it is still our new moon for the month, okay? So the new moon asks us to plant our seeds of intention. What will we like to begin here? Now, when we had this lunar eclipse that asked us to bring some things to culmination to an end, back in May, it would have been in your third house, thinking, learning, the way that you communicate. Um, Really, I feel like it's just such a heavy mental axis between the third house and the ninth house. So now as you're being presented with these fresh beginnings here in this ninth house, I really think this is an arrangement or a rearrangement of your philosophies and ideas that you've been moving around the world with, maybe different things about faith, you know. Also, though, this can just be so practical. It's Gemini in the ninth house space. Are you finishing that book and getting published? Are you finishing or joining some kind of training program or something? something like that. Law school. Is law school on the mind? Are you having legal conversations? Are you having conversations about documentation to take you in between the worlds? The, the passport. My goodness, we've still got a pandemic going on. Can you travel? All of these things could be very much so in your priority and on your plate over this next six months. Now, whatever is happening and coming up, just know that this particular energy at this moon, Saturn and Mercury are working really very well together. So it's it's like it brings a support. It brings a stability to this particular area. So likely whatever you're working on here will have long-term benefits, okay? On the 11th, we see Mars move into the energy of Leo. This will light up your 11th house space. So you might be moving and grooving and shucking and jiving with the friends with social groups with your long-range plans you could literally be mars in action leo making your dreams come true with your big heart expressing yourself in your social groups 11th house or in your long-range plans and goals and designs for yourself whatever it is though mars is bringing a lot of energy to this 11th house so try not to let yourself get too busy but while you are out being social whatever that looks like even if it's zooming remember that so much is changing in your beliefs and your ideas about the world and about who you are that as you're navigating this in a social scene allow your new ideas and conceptions to present themselves in these grouping scenarios because it's almost like if you keep trying to work with the old ideas that you had or old beliefs you'll find that they just don't work like in this new world okay 
On the 14th, we're going to see Saturn and Uranus coming together in this square, squaring at 13 degrees of Aquarius and Taurus between your 5th and your 8th houses. As these two are coming into clash and collision, this is where I think that truly this idea of the Libra voice has been pushed on, has been challenged. You saw it back in February. Where did something push you? It pushed in on your vulnerability. It challenged you to really speak up for yourself or take a risk in some way, right? Like it's okay to relax. It's okay to have fun. It's okay to say that. It's okay to not always be the peacekeeper. It's okay to not have to fight, right? Where did you get pushed on and it felt really raw, like it got to that underbelly and it was vulnerable. And now these two are squaring again and they're like, like it's okay to innovate. You have to innovate. This energy can feel absolutely frustrating. Now, because it's fifth house and eighth house as well, this could be vulnerability around children, around romance and things like that. But whatever it's hitting you, it could feel frustrating. But remember, you're just being asked to innovate. Move in a different direction. Surrender what was because maybe it's not the evolved action that actually fits here, okay? On the 20th, it is a busy day. We're going to see the sun move into the energy of cancer. So in the United States, it's going in the Western world. Let me say that. It's going to light up the summer solstice. And so what we're going to see here is this new energy, right? We're going to see um, this, this fresh start. Cancer is a cardinal energy. But in summer, we nurture. We enjoy. We really are, you know, enjoying the harvest of what's happened. The sun is out. We're coming out of our little crabby shells, letting the sun hit us. So for you in this Cancerian beautiful beginning, it'll be lighting up that 10th house, that career space. So remember, I just told you, maybe there's a magnetism or a change in your reputation happening. Not to mention, we just had an eclipse in your ninth house. Are you being seen in a different way or have your beliefs shifted and changed are you saying things speaking things for yourself in a different way that is honestly allowing you to be seen and have this fresh start now also on the same day jupiter is going to go retrograde in that energy of pisces so in the sixth house space jupiter has not been in pisces for very long it's just a quick trip to show you some things that you are going to be working on as we move into 2022 but as jupiter begins this retrograde here um, in the sixth house in pisces i think it's going to be at two degrees of pisces one of the things I think it shows you is genuinely like you need to spiritualize this area of your life in your daily routine, your daily life, minute by minute, by second, by second. That is what you are paying for life in is time. You're paying in the currency of time, Libra. So is it sacred to you? Is your day-to-day -day practice sacred to you? Do you like what you're doing? Is this where Jupiter is like, no, nah, we got to spiritualize this because this is all out of alignment for me, right? Like this is not, you're going to look back over it right now and see in your daily routine from your coworkers to your work, to your projects, to your health, to how you're being of service to other people, where there is definitely a realignment happening and likely you have new teachers, Jupiter, coming in to also apply their wisdom to help you see this from a different perspective. On the 22nd, Mercury is going to come out of retrograde at 16 degrees of Gemini, and this will light up that ninth house space for you. So now, you know, we were talking about this publishing, marketing, broadcasting, education, getting out into the ninth house space, travel. Now that Mercury will be out of retrograde, you can have a bit more confidence with taking this forward motion and making these decisions. Maybe this is where you're having those um, contract conversations for sure, but conversations that are happening can be, they can feel like they are a lot more grounded as Mercury is out of retrograde, okay? On the 24th, we've got our full moon of the month in the energy of Cancer, or at Capricorn, excuse me, at three degrees. So this will be in your fourth house space, home, family, real estate, property. This particular moon has a really nice interaction with Jupiter, but will also be um, Mars and Uranus are going to be moving towards this square that they're going to have. So it can bring a harshness to this energy just a little bit. But what the full moon is saying, I need to end, acknowledge, or adjust something around home. And the question truly around the home, the family, the property, your living space is, are we in an arrangement that helps us achieve? Capricorn, is the structure here solid and sturdy enough to stand on and to grow of and to create something? Am I in management of my own life, right? Like, do I have things under control or is my money and my house and my budget are going crazy? My children are running wild. Like, where, where do I need a Capricorn? I need to rein it in a little bit, right? Where do I need to create something that is solid and sturdy enough for me to stand on and grow moving forward? 
On the 25th, we see Neptune moving into retrograde in Pisces as well. So again, in that sixth house space, the retrograde will begin at 23 degrees of Pisces. So you can note that on your chart. Neptune is not running around the Zodiac, so it will be very easy to find, I assure you. But as Neptune retrogrades, it, reality becomes reality. We don't have anything to soften the blow because Neptune is flipped around, so we don't have that daydreamy quality available to us. So it is very real. What is happening in your daily life will be like, whoa, this is solid. This is very concrete. Uh, what's happening, what's going on. And really what the Neptune retrograde is asking you to do is to realign, reposition, and to reevaluate your ideals in this level or in this level, in this area of your life. So in the sixth house, like what are your ideals? What is your ideal daily routine? What are your ideals around your health? What is your ideal weight, physique, idea of a healthcare practitioner? Whatever it is, you're gonna be standing in the concrete reality of it and getting to redefine this area, okay? On the 27th, as we close out this month, Venus will move into the energy of Leo again in this 11th house space. And Venus will be in Leo until um, July 21st. So you have a good tour with Venus in this very fiery energy as well. Now, what Venus and Leo do love to do together is be extravagant. They're both real into that, right? So you may truly at a group level be feeling a little extravagant, feeling like I definitely, like I wanna share from this deep place of my heart, from this place that is just joyful. I wanna make unto the world a joyful sound, right? That could definitely be something that you're seeing, but you could also see just as equally groupings of people or social things coming towards you as well. But you could also see joyful, groupings of things coming your direction as well. We're in a new season. People are wanting to either peek out or peek in. You know, whatever it is, Venus will definitely still magnetize this area in the 11th house. And Venus is also very good for bringing money as well. So money towards your long range plans, money that makes you happy and joyful towards your long range plans could go a long way as we're ending out um, June. All right, my beautiful friends, I hope you have an absolutely gorgeous month. I look forward to seeing in the comment section down below how it's shaping up for you. And as you've listened to this forecast, what hits for you, but what also are you like having to wait so you can really see how it manifests and plays out? Let me know in the comment section down below. I love you guys.